All right, YouTube, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to make Humorex a region into the regulated PCP, how to add regulator to it. We're keeping original air reservoir, this guy, and making this regulated PCP. Um, in the beginning, I wanna give credits to Randy Koga from Humorex Origin Owners Group. He was my inspiration. He did a lot of research. He converted his uh, PCP to uh, regulate it. Do this at your own discretion if you're not comfortable, not responsible to any of the damage to your um, property or yourself. So be careful, watch it to the end so you don't hurt yourself because there's a lot of pressure in this um, reservoir on both ends and I'll explain how to um, degas it correctly. You watch to the end and we'll get through this really quick. All right, first we need to degas the front end of the air reservoir. This screw right here, set screw. So you slowly, it's, it's um, pumped to the max, it's fully charged. So the gas completely, once it stops, we'll remove that set screw just to make sure we're completely um, empty. And just like that, all right, and this guy is out. Set it aside. Now you need a four millimeter and you unscrew that set screw that's inside of your air reservoir. Um, there's no pressure yet, so just feel free to just unscrew that set screw with a four mil. Okay, and here this is a set screw. Now, this is here you have to be careful. Behind it, if you look inside, you'll see there's a tiny hole. It's about 1.2, 1.3 millimeter. And there's a check valve behind it. So behind that valve, there's a pressure in there and there's a lot of oil um, fill that tube. So first get some kind of container to contain that oil that's gonna squirt out. Now to press that, there's a couple thousand PSI. I don't know how much exactly, but I heard different numbers, two, one, two, three thousand. You need to get yourself a um, small little piece of wire or screw or something hard. That's uh, mine is about 1.2 millimeter thick and seven between seven and seven and a half millimeter long. You get that and you insert that little pane in there. We're gonna set this down. So you insert that into the little tiny little hole in there. Okay. All right, that's in a hole. Now you put your um, set screw back in and as you tighten the set screw, it will release, start pushing on that check valve and you get that started. Okay, All right. Um, it's gonna start pushing on the check valve and releasing that air mixed with oil all right there you go you hear that and you have to bleed that all the way until it's empty now we need to remove this um, end cap don't use pliers what you need to get, you need to go to the store and get yourself a bolt that's um, M8 by one and a quarter. Um, get it about one and a half inch, one and three quarters, something long. With a knot and a washer. Um, let me get that pin out. lock it with the knot and then by um, turning this you'll unscrew that this end cap there you go i got that started and now it's coming out now we need to take a stock off 
we need to remove this um, tube right here and clean it out inside. And if you haven't gotten the plug out from here, you can just beat it out once it's off. But we need to clean this tube inside really well because you don't want any of that oil. There's tons of oil in there. You don't want any of that oil going into your receiver or through your air regulator. It's going to screw, screw it up. So to get the stock off, you can also watch my other videos <clears throat> explaining how to tune the gun better. But um, you need a uh, four millimeter, one, two, and then three millimeter right here. Get the stock off and then we'll just unscrew this um, tube right here. I got a piece of thick leather, put that, um, plug back in so you don't bend the tube grab that grab it and it it goes here she is we're gonna unscrew this now here's what we're gonna do first we're gonna have to clean that uh, clean it off really really good you have to clean inside of it get rid of all the oil it needs to be absolutely dry clean um and that plug that you have inside, you know what I'm talking about, you'll see it. Get your, um, get wooden dowel or little wooden stick and just beat it off and get it out. Mine's already out. Um, don't ask me where it went. It's complicated, but um, mine is already out. So anyways, let's clean it out and then we're gonna put it back in install our fill port on the end of it towards the muzzle and next step is the fill port um, before we do the regulator we're going to talk about the fill port so now you need to fill the rifle from the end the muzzle end of the tube because the the fill port that comes originally is behind the regulator so you need to fill it from this end so i took original Humorex fill and I cut off this end right here um, thread it and installed in here because we took that um, set screw out which is M8 by one and a quarter and there's a check valve in here that only lets air one way I took the the end piece right here cut it off I cut it at um, about um, well, it's 0.97 inch, but you can do one inch long. Make it one inch long, okay? And then you need to get the, you need to thread the end. You get M8 by one and a quarter. <clears throat> and I thread it about um, like a 0.24 in here, like a quarter inch, about a quarter inch thread in here. Uh, once you do that, you put some um, Teflon tape around this, just the thread. Make sure it doesn't stick out so it doesn't get stuck in the, in the valve. Just uh, two, three turns of the Teflon tape. Cut it thin, just that thickness of the quarter inch wide. You put that in and you screw this guy back in. Once you screw in, you can tighten it by getting a piece of thick leather. You get your pliers and just tighten up. Um, doesn't have to be super tight because the, the compressed air is going to be held by the valve that's in here. This is just so the air doesn't escape on the way in. And once it's nice and tight, it will be sticking out about, well, it's 0.45 inch out. You don't want any less than that because then your adapter will be bottoming out at the end plug. Okay, now it becomes a fill port. So, and then you screw that back in the tube and that's how you're gonna pump your air in, into the tube. You don't use that front end fill port uh, anymore. Once we're on this topic of the, once we see the barrel, if you have factory air stripper, that's fine. You can use that. If you do have monoblock, these guys, you know what I'm talking about. They do a um, better job of silencing the gun. 
but you also need to drill two holes that's on the on the receiver end so the air escapes and what i did is i cut some of this um uh, sponge in here and I just stuck it inside in here rolled it like this and I put it in here so it kind of silences the air coming out around the you got it now about this uh, monoblock what I notice is when you slide it over the barrel it kind of, it has a play so what happens is when you install the monoblock you're you're starting to your accuracy goes um, out of whack the reason is you know how the the crown you know how the crown works so when the bullet comes out the the surface of the barrel needs to be f nice flat and even so that when the bullet pushes out it has an equal force on all sides if the if you have a bad muzzle crown or uneven cut barrel the bullet will come out sideways because it has more pressure on one end than another so what happens when a motor block when you slide it in that inside piece of plastic becomes your crown let's say and when i notice because it has a play it didn't align correctly inside it wasn't traveling exactly in the center of this hole inside the monoblock through and the accuracy was whacked so what i did is i took um, electrical tape black electrical tape and um, I cleaned this end of the barrel with alcohol really nice so it sticks better because it's kind of oily, it doesn't stick well. And I wrapped it around the barrel. So when the muzzle, when this guy slides in, it's nice and tight. Um, I did cut, well, different tapes are different thickness, but what I did is one and a half inch. It worked for me and I taped it around it nice tight okay and then your monoblock slides nice and centered there's zero play now it just nice tight like good now i know the barrel is centered to the monoblock so when the pellet or um, slug travels through it goes right in the center because if it's not centered through that hole it pushes there's an equal pressure against the baffles and it throws the pellet or slog um, weird ways accuracy suffers with this okay um, back again on how much do you fill air here um, use your compressor or pump gauge to see how much pressure you put in here um, this part this the pipe the tube that's here for the air it's capable for up to 4,000 psi so you can pump up to 4,000 um, 36 will be safe which is recommended you know 38 39 should be no problem 4,000 should be no problem okay tighten that up put it in a tube um, when you tighten this guy again use a piece of nice thick soft leather use pliers and just crank it uh, you can also use uh, foster fittings quarter inch foster fitting aftermarket with already threads but if you buy those from the store the threads gonna be different and you're gonna have hard time drilling that out and tapping it without messing up that um, valve the check valve the one-way check valve so that i figured that's going to be a little more work and more complicated than just uh, threading your factory one and it should look like that a fill port um, and you can get in the store um, lowe's home depot whatever stores you buy a little silicone little covers that slide in to protect this from dirt and debris coming in here and getting stuck in the valve so get one of those little silicone i haven't gotten yet but i'm gonna go get it silicone little end caps that nice and tight get a few have a, a couple spare ones okay so that's the fill port on this guy and the next in next thing is our regulator and quick follow-up how do you know that because you now you don't have a gauge to see how much air you have on the tube 
when are you getting empty you don't know when you're getting empty so this gauge right here is um it's going to show you past regulator if your regulator set let's say for 2000 psi you're looking at the gauge if it shows 2000 then you're pretty full um once it starts going below then you know you're low on air once you shoot one or two strings you'll know exactly how many shots you can get out of the full field so um, that's going to give you an idea, kind of rough estimate, but there is, there is a way to put a gauge on the side of the tube, but I would just stick to that. And now we're up for installing regulator part of the video. When you get this regulator, it will come with black um, finish on it, on that plenum. This is your plenum. Um, you're going to have to send it down. I use 400 grain sandpaper, just take the coating off and pretty much just a little more and uh, and I'll, and keep test fitting into the tube. Once it's nice and tight going in, you're good to go. Put a little bit of um, um, lubricant on your gasket. When you're sending it down, make sure you take the gasket out. Okay, now, and then you need to set your regulator to um, right here to appropriate pressure. I'm setting it to 1950 PSI. This is a 25 caliber. For um, 22 caliber, I heard that uh, 1900 PSI is a good number to start with. I'm setting mine to 1950 and I'll do more testing and then I'll post more videos on hammer spring adjustment and uh, pressure and how many shots and feet per second I get. So that's in the next videos. I'm going to insert it from this side of the air tube. I'm not going to slide it from that end all the way down. I'm just going to insert it here. So what I did is I measured how much of this housing sticking out, which is 1.13 inch. So I am going to insert this in 1.13 deep. There you go, spread it up. And then we are inserting this in to here. And now it's gonna be a little, yep, the gasket went in. Use your um, aluminum rod that you got it with your set to push it in. And if you push it a little too far, that's fine. You can, uh, once you pump the air up, it'll it'll bring it back down um, under pressure. There you go. Measure again. Need to go a little more. You put your tube back in. Uh, regulator. I'm gonna post right now, make and model. I'm gonna put a screenshot. This is the regulator I got and the regulator other people using. You can purchase it. I've seen them on eBay. You can get it for about between 100 and 120 dollars shipped to you. Um, search up online. There's a name and model right here on the screen. Uh, that's pretty much what you need. So search for that one. This is the this is the regulator I'm using. Um, that's it. Um, so in the next videos, we're gonna do some more testing with PSI, the hammer spring adjustment. And I'm going to post uh, uh, feet per second, the speed of the pellets or slogs. We're actually, we're going to use slogs. I have a variety of 28 up to 34. I've heard good things about 32 grain. Um, so we'll see. We'll figure out how many shots I get per this fill. And at what PSI and all of that good stuff. Um, let's assemble it, finish this up really quick, and thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that, and I'll see you in the next video.